According to many theories of personality, introverts and extroverts are often viewed in terms of these two extreme opposites. Introverts are all sat at home watching TV quietly in their joggers and their oversized sweatshirts, whereas the extroverts are all out partying the night away with large groups of friends. But the thing to understand about introversion and extroversion is that you cannot place them into these clearly defined boxes, as they are not all or nothing traits. Watch this video as I explain the personality traits of the 70% who fall in the middle. Today, let's talk about the five signs that you are an introverted extrovert. If you're new to my channel, I'm Sue Blackhurst and I put social psychology into everyday language. So if you love people watching and you want to know why people behave the way that they do, subscribe to my channel now and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on my videos coming out every Monday and Thursday. To find out more about me and what I do, do, do check out my website. The link is in the description box below and it's also on my homepage banner. There's no doubt that personality plays a huge role in our everyday lives, as everything that people do is a reflection of their personality. Personality is always with us, influencing what we think about, what we feel and how we behave. So understanding where you sit on this introversion, extroversion spectrum can influence everything from your social views, your relationships and your career. Think of introversion and extroversion as being on this, you know, this long spectrum. Some people will fall closer to the extreme ends, making them either, you know, very introverted or very extroverted. However, most people are closer to the middle, which gives them qualities of both introversion and extroversion. You can also look at it this way. Think of it like height, because whilst we do have very tall people and we also have very short people, the reality is that most people fall into the middle of a standard deviation graph making the majority of the population of average height. And the same rule applies to introversion and extroversion. Whilst there are those that sit at the extreme ends of the spectrum, very few of us can accurately call ourselves a total introvert or a total extrovert. For those who do sit at these extreme ends, in the same way as recognising somebody as being very tall or very short, the two extreme ends are actually very, very different. Introverts tend to be quieter and they're more reserved and introspective. Think of them as this filled balloon that slowly deflates as they walk into a room. It's almost like other people suck the energy out of them, leaving the introvert feeling drained and wanting to leave and recharge somewhere quiet and peaceful by themselves. Extroverts, on the other hand, walk into a room with this deflated balloon and it quickly inflates as they suck the energy out of the people through their social interaction. The introverts do enjoy spending time around others, it's just that they prefer the company of close friends that they have known for a long time, whilst the extrovert is more than likely heading off to the party with the sole goal of meeting lots of new people and making lots of new friends. There are also far more misconceptions about introverts than there are about extroverts. Introverts are often labelled as being shy and aloof, but these false perceptions are generally instigated by the failure of extroverts to understand how introverts think, feel and function. You see, extroverts are so busy looking ahead for that next opportunity to interact because they want to just talk and make new friends that they don't really give enough time to grasp or understand the introvert that's standing in front of them. The extrovert will simply assume that their mere presence is always welcome because they can't imagine why anybody else would ever need or want to be alone. And as a result, the introvert can find that other people try to change them. And you know there's nothing worse than being out and then someone coming along and grabbing you on the dance floor saying, come on, stop being so boring, join in and have a dance when you just don't feel in the mood. It's not that extroverts are trying to be pushy or arrogant. It's more like, you know, somebody saying, you know, that they love rare steak and they simply don't understand how anybody else could want to eat it any different way. The extrovert simply expects everybody else to think and feel the same way that they do. At the end of the day, there is no right or wrong personality type. And there isn't one type that's better or worse than the other. It's just different. Instead, both introverts and extroverts need to understand each other's differences as well as their similarities. 
But what about those people who fall in the middle? Let's say all of those of average height. What is their personality when they can quite happily fall into either side of the spectrum or flip from one end to the other, depending upon the situation? If you find that spending too much time around other people leaves you feeling drained, but you still enjoy meeting other people, or if you love being alone, but you also enjoy socializing with friends, then there's a pretty good chance that you are one of the 70% of people who fall somewhere in the middle. These are known as ambiverts or the introverted extrovert. And they identify with some characteristics of the introversion and some characteristics of the extroversion. And they tend to enjoy both spending time with others and spending time alone, depending upon the situation and their needs and feelings at the time. So if you're still unsure if you fit into the introverted extrovert, here are five signs that will let you know if you are an introverted extrovert. The impact of the environment. As an introverted extrovert, you're going to be sensitive to your surroundings because the ambience in a room can either energise or it can drain you. Now, your emotions and behaviour will be affected by both the genre and volume of the music that's playing and also the number of people in the room. It's all about this pressure that you feel. So going out as part of a large group to a loud concert where you're pressured into joining in is going to make you feel extremely overwhelmed. But going to a smaller, more intimate concert with close friends will get you up on your feet singing and dancing in no time. The impact of people. Although you gain a lot of satisfaction from your relationships, unlike a true extrovert, you don't have the energy to maintain a large social network, plus you don't naturally click with the first person that you meet. So if you're an introverted extrovert, you're going to invest time into the friends that make you feel at ease. You know, those sorts of people that you can hang out with them forever and you never run out of things to talk about. You see, the familiarity of these long-term friendships makes being with them really easy because you don't have to expel any energy trying to make an impression, so they don't leave you feeling drained. The introverted extroverts are happy going out to meet new people, but the main difference lies in the fact that there is only so much socialising that you can actually take. You know, you can't go out every night. So the thought of being out permanently is enough to make the introverted extrovert want to run home, lock all the doors, run away and hide. So the thing to look out for when socialising is, you know, after say a busy weekend or a long day at work, is that you can very easily run out of energy, especially if you're being forced to make prolonged small talk, as this is going to leave you looking for that escape route so you can just disappear and recharge somewhere quiet on your own. The impact of first impressions. As an introverted extrovert, you need time to warm up in social situations, but this makes your personality a real enemy of the good old first impression. When meeting people for the first time, you are deeply introspective and reflective, and this gives off the impression that you don't want to engage in conversation. Because in your mind, it takes so much effort to think of what to say, and you also worry because you're in fear of what other people would think. But once you feel comfortable and relaxed, you do begin to open up, but it's always and only on your terms. And only those at this extreme end of the extroversion are going to be seen dancing on the tables and being the life and soul of the party. So you are more than happy to be on the outside and always looking in. But the more time that other people invest in getting to know you, the more they will see and encourage you to open up and join in. The impact of conversation. True extroverts rarely struggle for anything to say because it's easy for them to make chit chat and talk with ease about virtually any topic. But introverts find it really hard to maintain small talk as they'd rather have a conversation based on depth and meaning. When it doesn't come naturally, continually thinking of something to say takes effort. So for the introverted extroverts, they find it takes less energy to just say what's on their mind than it does to search for what they see as fake and meaningless topics such as the weather. So conversation is there, but it does have to have some purpose. At networking events, for example, or parties, you're not going to be somebody who works the room, nor do you feel the need to draw a lot of attention to yourself in these social situations. 
You see the value in making connections with others and you especially love those rare moments when you meet a like-minded soul. But you have no interest in trying to prove yourself in a crowd of strangers. You aren't looking to be the most popular person in the room, you are simply looking to be the one that adds the most value. The impact of labels. The difficulty with the introverted extrovert is that your friends and family just don't quite get you because when you do want to be on your own, they try and drag you out because they don't see this need for solitude as being introversion, they see you as having an off day. And then on other occasions, they will look on in surprise at this sudden burst of energy and life and soul of the party. But when that doesn't last and you then want to retreat back into the peace and quiet and recharge your batteries, they come and question you to see what's wrong. So you can be outgoing and still be introverted. It's all about understanding the environment, the people and the conversations. And then you need to adapt according to what makes you feel safe and secure in your very own comfort zone. One day you can be the life and soul of your very own party. And the next day you can lock all the doors and enjoy an evening alone binge watching Netflix. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. Please don't forget to like the video, do leave a comment and if you can, please do share it. Do take care everybody and I will see you next time.